I kind of did it for the first few years when I was out there coaching um, Shane because everybody else was doing it and people were older than me were talking about it but right now when we look at a couple of points on it like if you're not you know if you're course managing and laying back as such and managing your ball and making sure you know making sure that you're putting it into like you're further away from the hole a lot of the time and that's going to make it difficult to be aggressive and to perform and you know there's no point going out there playing a level of golf now and I would most certainly talk to the girls a bit about this but there's no point us going to the European Championships and kind of been you know tiptoeing up and playing it nice and safe we're playing against Sweden and we're playing against Spain who are absolutely jamming this flag out from 190 yards so right so we're going to play full out let's go for it let's see what happens um, and the caveat on that is there's going to be certain places and times where it's the risk reward scenario so therefore if i take a risk here do i get a seriously good reward yes well let's go if i take a risk here but yet there's no reward what's the point in taking the risk so I, I, I countenance that with a little bit of, I suppose, some of the work I've read of Scott Fawcett and, and the decade stuff in terms of, you know, if you're 190 out and you get the ball into the hole in three strokes, you're, you're actually making up on the field. If you're two putting from 40 feet, you're making up on the field from 33 or 34 feet, in fact. So we need to be arming the girls with this information and understanding what course management is about in terms of their own, their own perspective. So if we look at it from and we try and course manage a team of six at the Europeans in the same fashion, we're going to fail. We're going to fail miserably. We need to work individually with each player, again, to understand what's their view of the place, what's their view of how they're going to go at it, and make sure they've got the confidence to do that. We also need to respect their wishes of how they want to do it, and we need to counter with any good questions they might have with some good evidence-based backup on why X might be better than Y. So I think it's important. The other thing I would say is that after a certain handicap shame, Course management is so often uh, confused with a bad shot, especially to spectators. Um, spectators, coaches, parents, you know, oh, well, why did he do that? No, no, hold on a second. He actually had a really good plan. He just had a horrible shot. So I think that's the other part for me as well. We need to really know what we're dealing with. And that can only be reached when we question players really well and have them in a safe enough environment where they feel they can have the conversation without being judged. Because what we don't want to do is have those conversations thinking that we never made mistakes as well. So the question is, could we actually enter into the safe agreement of a conversation, bearing in mind that learning might take place at the end of it? I mean, you don't have to name any names, but yeah. were there players that stood out that this was a strength of their game and it was a real asset to them? Or vice versa. <laughs> I'd say that's probably more common. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's a, I'll tell you a good story about uh, course management, like, and, and up in the ante and being a wee bit more aggressive. I'll tell you a great story. I'm sure she won't mind me. Well, it's too late if she does anyway, but it's a complimentary story. But we were at the World Championships in 2016, and um, Annabelle was with us, Annabelle Wilson, a young, fresh faced 15 year old, super talented at UCLA now. Olivia Mahaffey was beginning to get her stuff together. Olivia and I have been fighting since she's about 10 years old. So she was beginning to look like a world-class player, class act that she is. And of course, the, led by the great Leona. And Leona was up front in terms of, you know, great practice, you know, really good quality. And you could see the other two girls really learning on the job, really. That was very much my impression of the week, that, the, that Leona didn't say a whole lot, but when she did, we all marched. And it was great. But the last day, we were in seventh, I believe. And... Uh, maybe sixth, but we definitely weren't in medal contention and we were going to uh, Maya Cobra for the last round and just very quietly in the bus on the way out the door. It wasn't me, so-called team leader. Leona just looked at the three of us and said, let's get this today because we might not get the chance again. And the intensity was lifted and the practice intensity and the play intensity. I remember Olivia birding six, birdieing 16, birdieing 17. Leona got an unbelievable up and down 80. You could feel the intensity was lifted a little bit. And I thought that that was Leona just lifting it in terms of management be damned. We have a possibility of a medal here today and let's go for this thing. So the girls went, they did a serious job, moved from seventh to uh, the bronze medal. Um, and we got our first ever world championship medal.